Hello world, welcome to the 24th video on my channel and the 5th video in my Python for Finance playlist. Please remember to subscribe to my channel to watch me build my own Jarvis-like digital assistant called Chain. In the last Python for Finance video, we pulled up my Coinbase portfolio balance using the Coinbase API. And in the first video of my Zillow API playlist, I was able to get the Zestimate of my rental property in Louisiana. Using API should be the primary way we access data from external sources like Zillow and Coinbase. Unfortunately, not many financial institutions have APIs to access your own data. In my opinion, this is to make sure we have to log into the websites and they can force their advertisements on us. So when I log into my Wells Fargo mortgage account, there's always some sort of credit card advertisement that I have to click, are you interested? No thanks, before I can proceed. And so um, if you automate everything, you're not gonna be seeing those advertisements and I'm pretty sure the companies don't want that. So in cases where there isn't an API available, we must do what's called web scraping. This is where we access the HTML code of websites directly and interact with them using a high-level programming language such as Python as we are. In this video, we'll be using a web scraping library called Selenium to retrieve my Fidelity account balance. Fidelity does not offer an API to access your own data. So just full disclosure, 90% of this code is from the amazing contributors at Stack Overflow. I ran into several um, issues doing it by myself, and so I just posted it on Stack Overflow and they answered it quickly. So let's check this out. It's probably gonna run and show an error, but that's okay, but at least it runs. So let's check it out. So it's going to open Fidelity. And it's going to type in my username and password. Then it's going to check my account balance. Then it's going to close. And see, this is an error. It's only happening when I'm recording, so I think it might be a timing thing. But it says, your Fidelity balance is, and I blurred it out. But it shows me my balance. Okay, so that's how it works. Uh, if this is the first time to my YouTube channel, I just want to let you know this is not a tutorial series, so I won't be going what each line does, but we do check out the code. So from Selenium, we're going to import WebDriver. We're going to uh, import this WebDriver weight, and I have a kind of fast computer. It's a gaming laptop, and so you have to make it wait on when something is uh, available because this program even runs faster than my um, you know fast computer then you have to do expected conditions and so um, I'll show you what that means in a second and exceptions and that's what I did to catch some errors and then import time because I have to make it slow down a little bit so I like to use Chrome so first we're going to do an options variable. Then we're going to call webdriver.chromeOptions. And then we're going to add these arguments. So I had to include each one of these or else they're going to get a bunch of errors. And Chrome and Internet Explorer and Firefox, they don't like all this automation. So there's going to be a lot of uh, barriers. So these dot add experimental options gets you through the... Um, all those errors. Then you call the web, webdriver.chrome, pass it each one of these options, and then you got to tell it where this Chrome driver is. This is where I got stuck and I had to watch several YouTube. So you have to go just Google Chrome driver and then you'll be taken to the download screen and then save it. So each time this is called it goes into my documents and calls Chrome driver. So that took a little bit for me to find out. Okay, so now we'll go into what I call the fidelity check. So first, you use the driver the variable that we called above to get fidelity.com. 
and then you're going to tell it to wait until that expected condition, which is what we imported above, is clickable. So if the page is loading and it's not clickable, it's not going to do anything until it finds this right here, this user ID input. Let me show you how to do this. So whatever website you're trying to go to, so for us, we're going to fidelity.com. You right click on it and press inspect. And then it's going to pull the HTML for that. So here you can right click it, press copy, and then copy the selector. And when you do that, you can call that by CSS selector and it's there. So then you're going to send keys, which is what Selenium calls it. And you type in my user ID, which I have blurred. Then you're going to find an element called password and send it the keys, which I blurred out my password. And so the first one, the reason why you have to do that is because you have to slow it down until it's available. But if that one's available, then the next one is. So you don't have to do the web driver wait each time. And then same thing, you click on the password, find out the selector of the password block, and then the login button right here. So just right click anywhere on here, press inspect, and you'll see the HTML of this. Then you dot click, right? That's the method to tell it to click. Okay, then I have to let it sleep for five seconds. This is not part of Selenium, this is just part of the time library. So I want, once the element is present, I want it to find it by XPath. And the reason why I had to do this is because if I did it by CSS selector, that would find a bunch of stuff. So uh, I'm not going to take it to the website, but if you right click on the balance, it'll give you this XPath. Then you have to wait, just like up here, WebDriver wait. And then get the balance. So this element has a bunch of lines in there. So all I did was split it and just get the first one, which is just a number. And then I print your fidelity balance is the balance. Then I close the driver or the website. So if you did your code wrong, but your web driver weight was right, you wrote that correctly, it, you might get a timeout exception. So I want to tell me that the page is not loaded. And then this import error, it says closing program. I tried to catch this error down here, but I guess it didn't work. So I'm still working on that. Um, it doesn't happen when I'm not recording. So uh, something with I'm um, recording slows down the processor. So that's the code. So every paycheck, I log into each financial website and calculate my net worth. The whole goal is to grow your net worth or whatever your personal finance goals is if it's passive income then you want to make sure your passive income grows the only way you can make sure these things are growing is by tracking it so every two weeks I track my net worth so your net worth is assets less your liabilities so I'm checking all my stock and brokerage accounts to see my assets go up and then I also check my mortgage which is the only um, debt I have so that's your liability so I want to make sure my assets are growing and my liabilities are decreasing but I want to automate this whole process and have my digital assistant Shane pull my net worth anytime I want so I hope you enjoy this video please like the video and subscribe to my channel goodbye world